Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the Criterion Collection review series where I'm reviewing every movie in my personal Criterion Collection and today we're going to be looking at the 1971 life-affirming comedy classic Harold and Maude uh, which is number 608 in the collection. Um, so Harold and Maude is uh, once again a very interesting movie for me. I actually saw this movie in my history of the motion picture class which I have mentioned many times in this series and what was so interesting about this movie is that when our professor first described the plot to us and told us what it was about a lot of classmates seemed very um, uh, reactionary towards it right to to have a plot uh, where a young man uh, falls in love with an older woman who is in her 70s, 80s, uh, you know, you're definitely going to get some looks. You're going to get some some questionable uh, opinions about that uh, about that premise. Um, but I think once the movie was over and and the whole year had finished, I would say most students, including a lot of uh, friends I made in the class, said it was their favorite movie that we watched. Now, just to reiterate, this was a class where we also watched Rashomon, Wild Strawberries, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zuzo you know, classics of cinema, pillars of, of art house and international cinema. Um, but I think Harold and Maude has this relatable and likable quality to it um, that makes it such a special movie that is still really impactful to this day, even, was it 40 years later, maybe even 50 years later? It's just, it's completely insane. Um, but to get into the plot, as I've briefly already described, uh, we follow a young man named Harold, uh, who, uh, whose family is extremely rich, uh, but he isn't really enjoying that lifestyle at all. He's very bored, very passive, um, and for whatever reason, he is very interested in death uh, to the point where he likes to fake uh, suicides to sort of mess with his, his mother and um, family and friends and whoever else. Um, and uh, one of his other fascinations is to go to funerals. Um, at one of these funerals, uh, Harold meets an older woman named Maude, uh, who seems to sort of pick him out from the crowd and notices that he keeps showing up to the same funerals as him, and they soon form this unlikely friendship um, where Maude is almost like the exact foil uh, for, for, for Harold, where she is full of life and jubilant and um, you know, she's she's quirky, right? Something like that, where uh, she likes to steal cars. Um, she uh, is very obsessed with plants and with life, and just you know wants to wants to do something new and exciting every day, and sort of um, helps to teach Harold to get out of his own funk and really embrace life and walk to the beat of his own drum and really embrace it. You know, um, so right off the bat, I will say Harold and Maud. Uh, for a movie that is about death, or at least when their character is being obsessed with death, it is one of the most life-affirming and youthful, vibrant movies I've ever seen. Um, it is a movie that feels very um, cozy and warm and relaxing. Um, it, it reminds me a lot of like My Neighbor Totoro um, or some of these other just chill hangout movies, um, but rather than uh, wasting a lot of time with the hangout part it is just you know spending time with these characters while they have really interesting conversations about life and you know what's the meaning of life and how to sort of uh, exist and navigate through it um, while at the sa same time having a lot of really fun montages um, dipping into surreal dark humor with the suicide scenes um, it's just really really a really fascinating mix of genres that works a lot better than it probably should and I think one of the interesting things about Harold and Maude is that it's not a movie that is extremely like complex or deep, which I think um, a lot of the movies I've discussed with Criterion seem to have, right? It's very metaphorical, you're meant to sort of get these, these profound uh, moral uh, themes and ideas from these movies. And I feel like Harold and Maude isn't really aiming for that, you know? It's very obvious what the movie is about, and the metaphors that are there are very clear. There isn't a lot to parse through. It's just nice, you know? It just is, um, I don't want to say safe. I think, I think it feels that way to me because I've seen it uh, a few times and, you know, it's familiar. But I think it is a movie that is very cozy, um, you know, it is very, um, 
I don't know. It's 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 a movie that takes place in the fall. It gives you those those sort of vibes, that coolness, changing of the seasons. You know, you can almost smell the movie. You can you can get that 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 sense of the climate, I guess. And and I think sort of the joy of watching this movie comes from watching the characters having so much fun. And I mean, there's a really great sequence where um, Harold and Maude are just in a field, like dancing and rolling around, and just you know living life in the simplest ways possible and there's just this this inherent joy to it this inherent um jubilance to it you know it's it's just infectious quite honestly um and what really helps to sell these themes and these ideas and this this feeling and this mood are the actors uh with bud court who is great as um harold who is able to be at once very cold and distant and yet as his character changes and becomes more um more uh, assertive more present in his day-to-day -day life he does seem kinder he does seem warmer he does seem more passionate um, and it's easier to sort of connect with him in that way you know he he has this deadpan to him that isn't like a bill murray deadpan where he's very precocious or you know acting like the smartest guy in the room it, it's almost childish to me you know like almost like a, a kid that doesn't understand what they're doing is wrong or bad um you know it, it is it is more similar to 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 an innocence in a way um but his deadpan really sells the the comedic scenes especially the suicide scenes and really makes them work and then ruth gordon as mod is just absolutely fantastic it's impossible not to fall in love with her not even in like a romantic way but just in a character way in a human way of just seeing how much she loves life and just really grasps it you know she just never wastes a moment on screen she's always doing something and um and i mean even though she is so much fun she isn't without her own complexities and her own emotional moments that while we don't necessarily get very in depth into them we do get to get hints of them in a way that does add depth to her character without taking away from the main plot of the film and makes her more well-rounded more interesting and I think those little moments help to to sort of get away from the trope of you know the 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 the, the playful fun woman uh, coming in, in into a man's life and saving him from depression. Uh, I think Maude is a little bit more complex than that and more well written than that. Um, and I think in the hands of another director or another writer, it really could have gone the the other direction. But they really do a good job of developing her here and. Uh, making her more than just an object of the main character's affection. She really is her own character and exists beyond uh, Harold, I would, I would say. Both actors are really great in the comedic scenes as well. Um, in particular, Bud Court in the uh, fake suicide scenes um, absolutely nails those moments, which I would argue are some of the funniest scenes in the movie, um, where they do get very surreal and weird and 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 dark but they they work so well they give a movies they give the movie such a unique flavor and style and you know make it really stand out from other films of this of this ilk and i think really really um helps the movie um have ha have its staying power you know gives it this unique um color and texture to it another thing that helps to um sort of uh support the uh cozy feeling the the nostalgic a warm fall atmosphere is the music from Cat Stevens, who does um, all of the songs in the movie. Um, Ed, uh, I mean, whenever I think of Cat Stevens, I think about um, Cat in the Cradle and the Silver Moon, and that song is just so nostalgic. It's so uh, emotional, so um, familial, right? And I think that gives that vibe is present in most of the songs here, um, with the music feeling almost eternal. Um, yet folky and you know uh, uh, cozy and intimate you know like this is the type of music I would expect to be played around the campfire or on a lazy afternoon hanging out in a field or something you know uh, played at a picnic you know it just again helps with that that feeling that coziness that warmth um, and really really fits with the movie more than I thought it would it, and and as a special feature show uh, Cat Stevens music was instrumental in creating the look and the mood and the editing of the movie so it makes a lot of sense that 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 it fits so perfectly with everything and then well now we're going to get a little bit into spoilers but i think one of the triumphs of the movie is the way it sticks the landing at the end 
where I think the ending uh, in most movies uh, would be very weak, it would be very saccharine, um, it wouldn't work as well as it does here, and I think it is the specific choices they make. But I think what uh, works so well about the ending uh, is, well, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, in the ending, uh, Maud uh, dies. She decides that you know she gets to 80, 80 years old, she's lived the life she wants to live, even though her and Harold have gotten married and they fell in love. Um, you know, she decided, you know what, I don't want to fade away, I don't want to cling on to life, I've done everything I want to do, and it's better for me personally and for other people if I just go now. So swallows a bottle of pills, Harold freaks out, takes her to the hospital, and while this montage is, is happening of, of him taking her to the hospital, it is intercut with him driving a car very fast around a cliffside, and you're just wondering how are these things connected. Um, and as Maud dies and passes away, uh, the car goes flying off of a cliff and crashes in, into the ground below. Um, but then uh, the camera pans back up to the cliff and there's Harold standing there perfectly fine holding a guitar and he begins to strum, um, if you want to sing out, sing out, if you want to be free, be free, which was a song that Maud taught him. Um, and that sort of scene sort um, helps to show how Harold has really taken Maud's lessons uh, to heart. Um, by connecting Maud's death to what would be Harold's suicide, it helps to show how this particular suicide attempt is different from all of his others, where in the past his suicide attempts have been almost uh, attention-seeking, right? Of trying to, in a weird way, uh, find a meaning in life through death, where death uh, sort of brings people together it, it makes people care about you, it conveys emotion, uh, while Harold in his general life outside of these fake suicide attempts is just sort of wafting through, you know, not really making an impact on anybody and being trying to be controlled by his family and his mother in particular. Um, but then when he does have a very emotional, personal, and life-fulfilling experience, a life-affirming experience, that then ends with a death, a very emotionally um, striking and damaging event um, you know his his suicide his suicide attempt as it would seem originally has more meaning it it shows you know how how hurt how, how hurtful this can be how painful a loss can be but then you know he doesn't actually die he it is more symbolic where he is giving up this this physical material thing which Maud was big about not not holding on to material objects but holding on to people and to memories and to experiences and so with Harold singing that song it's clear that he's gonna hold on to Maud and you know really cherish their memories and it's conveyed entirely through visuals and music and you know slight callbacks rather than dialogue rather than having a final moment of Harold you know talking to someone and being like you know she might be dead, but I still love her, you know, something like that. And it's so beautiful and way more impactful than anything else they could have done in the movie and is almost like a perfect little bow. And I think in the hands of any other director or any other filmmaker, it really would have gone the, 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 the other direction I was just talking about, you know. It is the easy way of expressing that, it is the, the simpler way, but I think it really would not have been true to the movie and to the way it's been conveying itself this entire time. And I think, I don't know, it just makes this movie feel so much uh, more emotional and, 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 and empathetic and kind and warm and cozy. And it's just, it's a warm blanket of a movie that while it does have its ups and downs and its emotional moments, it is ultimately a hopeful film. It is a film that understands that life goes on and, you know, no matter what tragedy or heartbreak you went through, at least you experienced it. You can never lose those memories. You can never lose that experience and you can only learn from it. And the best thing you can do is to live on, to, 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 to grab life, you know, that it is, it is always better to have lived through something and to have experienced it and have felt those emotions than to have done nothing at all. Because to do nothing, to experience nothing, is is essentially killing yourself slowly but for how much that i love this movie and how much i think it is so funny and kind and cozy um it's interesting to me how sparse the special features are 
um, where a lot of criterions, you know, you go to the special features section and there are just tons and tons of different things like interviews, short films, essays, you know, the works. Um, Harold and Maude really doesn't have a lot on the disc itself. Um, all it really has are a few interviews. Uh, one with Cat Stevens that was taken, I want to say, in 2011, 2012. Um, and then one with Hal Ashby, the director, one with Bud Court, uh, both of which are like lectures that they gave at universities um, that, that are all really great at showing you the, uh, the process and the intention behind the film, which is really interesting on its own and really well done. Um, and is worth seeing, especially if you are a fan of the film. There's also a commentary track with a biographer for Hal Ashby and, a, and the producer for the film, which I haven't had a chance to listen to, but I feel like it would also, once again, give some insight into the intentions behind the film and the production of it, which are always really interesting. And then, almost in contrast, the booklet here has a little bit more in-depth material. I don't want to say if it's necessarily better, but it is, um, goes a little bit more in depth with, with, with some other aspects of the film. Uh, so first of all, you have the essay written by Matt Zoller Seitz, I hope I said their name correctly, um, which does a really great job as all great Criterion essays do of um, sort of exploring the film in the context of Hal Ashby's career, um, but also looking into the themes and the ideas and just how once again, how, how much of a life affirming film it is and how it is a movie that does like its main characters, uh, sort of uh, march to the beat of its own drum uh, and stands out from many other films of its ilk. Um, but then you also get really great, um, you also get really great interviews, one of which is with Ruth Gordon, um, which was uh, conducted around the production of the movie um, that really shows how Ruth Gordon was basically like Maude in real life in a very interesting way. Um, and it's just, you know, it's just really nice to, to, to hear from her and her perspective on the film. Um, you also get a good interview with Bud Court, uh, who once again is similar to his character and just, you know, a little idiosyncratic, a little, little quirky, but, but, but fun to listen to. And in general, this booklet just feels more extensive than what's on the disc and is more extensive than a lot of, uh, Criterion booklets, especially some of the more recent ones. It, it helps to make the whole package more well-rounded and in-depth. Um, but even if you, you know, even if the special features weren't that great, you would still have a fantastic movie in extremely high quality, great sound um, that is just so much fun to rewatch and experience again and just, you know, let it let it wash over you in, in, in a sense. Yeah, that's Harold and Maude, a really incredible film and, uh, sort of, and I think a movie that will soon become one of my go-to comfort movies. Uh, but either way, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please like it. If you want more people to see it, please share it. Um, also, please write down in the comments what you think about Harold and Maude. Uh, do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, do you think it's fun? Do you think it's depressing? I, I would love to hear your guys' opinion on it. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And we're going to be looking at the underrated David Fincher classic, The Game. Uh, but thank you all so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.